come, 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 come on! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of the world, I am George, you are you, I am here to review Wonder Woman, but this time I'm going to review in rhyme. Actually, that was improv, but this next bit is not. <laughs> Wonder Woman came out and reviewers bowed in praise. The Wonder Woman praise went on for days and days and days. And days turned into weeks. Erudite men turned into geeks as they flocked to see a film about a girl with nice bum cheeks. A superhero woman with plans to save the world derived from a comic book which was made for little girls. And everyone seems to think that this film is so great. A female superhero. It was truly worth the wait. But I have many qualms because I saw the movie and I almost fell asleep, quite frankly, because it bored me. And as for female heroes, it's not new. I tell you so. Margaret Mitchell wrote Gone with the Wind almost 80 years ago. She was a real hero, since you cannot write much better, just like Daphne du Maurier, who wrote The Birds and Rebecca. And then there's Mary Curie, whose strict and keen defiance made her the first woman in history to win a Nobel Prize twice for science. And since we're celebrating females who think and do and can, Let's not forget that Wonder Woman was created by a man. Which is probably the reason why she dresses so appealing. Because when men get that feeling, we want sexual healing. So a guy drew his ideal woman, which is really nothing new. Yet this movie is progressive, says every film review. How, might I ask, is this film a plus for equality? Was it made to improve our culture and shown on big screens for free? No. It was made for money, not radicalism. This film is not about women, it's about capitalism. See, rich Hollywood men were convinced they'd make a profit. So they funded the female hero film to gladly line their pockets. So when you say this was a giant step for girls, remember it made men into some of the richest in the world. And whilst we're on the subject, heroines are nothing new. Uma Thurman in Kill Bill, a hero, would anyone argue? She even got two movies, both a huge success. The fans all wanted more, no one wanted less. Oh, and how about Alien? Did we all forget about that? That had a female hero who saved men when the bitch was back. And I don't recall any guys ever getting mad that their hero was a girl until the films got bad. All men cared about was if the film was good. Gender was irrelevant, a point everyone understood. But nowadays it seems as if this is some enormous feat. A female superhero gets people in the cinema seat. Even though in this same month there was another female hero in a movie called Colossal, which at the box office made zero, though it was a far better movie than this one. Yet no one went to see it, so in theatres it is gone. My bad, I forgot. People love this because it's for little girls which is why she massacres German soldiers 
and stabs them to death to save the world. Which is of course more child friendly than a woman far away killing fictional aliens in order to save the day. But as for feminism and all this film's acclaim, why is it throughout the movie a man led this dame? He took her off her island, he took her to London too. He led her through the war to get her where she was going to. And then at the end she killed another man, which saved absolutely no one, yet somehow pleased the fans. Now, let's think about this people. After she killed this guy, the war carried on and she saved no other lives. And all that villain's power was whispering in people's ears. The worst power of all time since nothing changed once he disappeared. Because in case you didn't notice, there was a World War II and a Vietnam. So what exactly did he do? This villain was so useless, it's almost too bad to be true. So Wonder Woman did nothing to prevent evil for me and you. Killing her protagonist made no difference whatsoever. And the moral was, evil's unstoppable. Girl, you can be my hero, never. John Lennon actually made this same point on good and bad, except it took him just five seconds and he gave a solution, I might add. We're all violent inside, we're all Hitler inside, we're all Christ inside. And it's just to try and work on the good bit of you. But wait, one second. Allow me to understand how the man in this movie led our hero's hand. Because Steve Trevor is the guy who took Wonder Woman everywhere and then sacrificed his life to destroy that gas up in the air. So who was the real hero of this fictional foray? Well, it looks like it's the man, because he's the one who saved the day. And I'm not criticising women or saying girls need a guy who's ripped. All I'm criticising is the fucking terrible script. But Wonder Woman looked nice, and she walked on no man's land, leapt off her friend's backs, why? She can climb rock with her hands. She also seemed to know, frankly, almost nothing, which made no sense at all, since it seems she's read everything, and she speaks hundreds and hundreds of languages too, yet she needs a man to guide her. Does this sound like equality progression to you? A clueless, sexy woman who's read a lot of books, follows her man and is praised for her looks, kills ancient gods, yet can't get through a revolving door. I know, it was an homage to Superman, but Clark Kent was pretending to be dumb. Staying covert is what he did it for. And lastly, wasn't it strange to set the film during the war where real men fought and died to save women, land and more? Isn't it in bad taste to put Wonder Woman here? I don't mean to sound sexist, but no woman ever faced that fear. This film chose the one location where women never fight. Why not put her somewhere fictional so that she can test her might? Look, all women have power. This I can't deny. Why not explore the many ways 
in which women truly fly. For example, let us unearth a film from yesteryear, a film which starred a woman when a giant ape appeared. That film is King Kong, and in her own way, it really is the woman whose power saved the day. She didn't fight with guns and swords, she remained more pure. She saved the day with love, what her female strength is for. For women truly have their ways of driving men crazy, but they also have a way of stopping men from being lazy, and they prevent men from chasing dreams that are hazy. All men would climb Everest if they didn't stop to chase a lady. So in some subtle female way, women bring about a peace. Girls do end many wars with their simple maternal ease, which is the simple metaphor of the great King Kong. It's that lovely women help the world to get along. For the final line of King Kong, when it's clear there will be peace, is that it was beauty which truly killed the beast. Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. So female love does kill monsters in each and every way. Mothers kill the beasts in men each and every day. And it would have been real nice if this film explored that more. Instead, we got a female hero who kills Germans in a war. Well, maybe I don't see things clear, and maybe it's just me. But I'd rather watch Chitara. That's the girl for me. <laughs> As always guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned, more cool stuff coming up, and if there's anything you want me to review, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of Wonder Woman, and I will see you again very very soon. Peace.